Welcome to Pipes Around the House. Today we're going to be fitting a dual flush cable valve and a fill valve to this toilet behind me here. Now this is the kit that I bought to do this job and it includes the fill valve and the dual flush cable valve. Now obviously according to the issue you got, you don't necessarily need to replace both. You could just replace the fill valve or the flush cable valve on its own. And these parts are available separately. So the reason I'm doing this job is because my fill valve is letting small amounts of water into the system when it shouldn't be. So let's take a quick look at that now. So if we just take this lid off, and if you've got the cable valve like me, you'll need to pull this little flush cable off. And you take that off the button like that. So taking a quick look into the system, you've got your fill valve by here, and you've got your flush valve there. Now my flush valve is fine, but I'm going to change that anyway because I've never really rated the parts that came with this toilet. The issue I've actually got, which is why I'm doing this job, is my fill valve. And if you look, there's a bit of play in the top there. And what's happening is, periodically, that's dropping down, and this is filling up like that when it shouldn't be. And then you're getting that awful screech at the end, and it's doing this throughout the night. So the first important thing to do is turn off the water to the system. Now on this toilet I've got an isolation valve underneath. If you haven't got an isolation valve on your toilet, then you're probably going to have to turn off the mains water at the stopcock. If you can't find your stopcock, you're going to have to turn off the water out in the street. Now the unfortunate thing with this is it means you'll have no water supply to your house until the job is finished. In my situation where I've got the valve, I can turn the valve off and use the water in the rest of the house, no problem at all. So here we're just on the left side of the toilet underneath the system. And we've got this valve here and you just need to get a screwdriver and you might have a brass valve if you've got the same thing this is obviously a speed fit plastic joint and it's the same principle just turn your screwdriver or your valve 90 degrees to the right like that now your water should be isolated so that means you're not going to get any water coming through while we're messing around with the system and here we got a wing nut and we got one of these on each side of the toilet under the system and this just holds the system physically to the toilet pan now unfortunately because all these nuts are so tight together I'm going to have to remove the cistern and take it off to do the job I need to do. Now if you've got a bit more room and access and you're only changing the fill valve, it is possible to isolate your water, drain the water down, undo this plastic nut just up there, and you can take the fill valve out and replace it without taking the cistern off. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to take the cistern off to do this, but additionally, I'm going to change my flush valve, and to change the flush valve, you need to remove the whole thing anyway, because you need to undo a nut which is underneath this toilet pan. So to help drain the water, if we release this here, which is the flush valve, and that has just mimicked basically pushing the flush button. Now we've got out as much water as we can in one flush there. Now you'll notice it's not refilling itself back up because obviously I just isolated the water. So the next thing to do is soak up all this water with a towel. Just push that towel or cloth or whatever you've got inside there, try to soak all this up because you need to get it all out or it's all going to leak out when we remove the system. An easy thing to do is lift the toilet lid and rinse that straight out into the toilet. And then back in for a little bit more. Now we've got that completely dry, I'm going to remove the water feed underneath that goes into the fill valve and then we're going to undo the wing nuts to remove the system from the toilet pan. So here's the brass nut that's attaching my mains water feed into the fill valve. I'm just going to undo this, and I'm going to do that by using this spanner and turning anti-clockwise. And hopefully that valve is isolated and nothing will come out. Now I'm just going to place this towel underneath here again, because you'll notice a bit of water there. Now obviously this pipe is full above the valve, and I think this valve might not be fully isolated. Hopefully it is now. If you see what I mean, from that valve up to the brass nut there, it's likely to be full of water. Well, it will be full of water. And that's all going to pour out now when we undo that. So it's worth having that towel underneath. Oh dear. And there we go. There's a bit of excess water out of the cistern there, all over the floor. So that's lovely. So the next thing to do is remove this wing nut here and then go around the other side and do that one. Now on most systems, if you've got a normal toilet, you should find that you'll have two holes inside here and probably if someone's done it properly, there'll be a screw through those two holes with a rubber washer 
fixing into some plugs in the wall. So you need to undo those first before you remove this off the wall. Now in my situation we've got a corner toilet so there are no pre-drilled holes. Now I know I didn't put any sealant behind here so this should come straight away from the wall. Now if you're doing the same and there's no pre-drilled holes just remember some plumbers might put a dab of sealant or grip fill behind the cistern just to hold it to the wall. So you might have to remove it with a little bit of pressure but just be careful. So now if I lift up gently this should come away from the toilet pan, just like that. And another thing to note is in the bottom, I'm now dripping water all over the floor, you should have a rubber washer like that. So there we go, that's the name of the washer. It's a cistern coupling washer, and I bought this for about £1.20 in Screwfix. Now it's worth buying one of these because if this old washer has been sat there for a long period of time, you'll find it's been compressed where it's been tightened up against the toilet pan, and sometimes it's just not fit for purpose. And for the cost, while you're removing everything else, you may as well fit a new one. So just quickly back to the parts I've got. There's your fill valve, and it also comes with a nut and a washer for the bottom, which I'll show you now. Rubber washer, nut, and then we got our flush valve, which is a cable operated flush valve, as it says on the box. Now you may well have a different flush valve. Some of them, the buttons push directly onto the valve itself. So just make sure that you buy the correct parts before you fit them, and also that the parts fit. I've got to be honest, I'm having a bit of a twitchy bum moment because I'm looking at that fill valve and wondering if it's going to fit in my corner cistern. I don't know. We'll find out now. So I've just laid the cistern on a nice clean towel now and that's more so just so it doesn't hit about on the floor tiles because I don't want this to crack or chip. Now, it's what we've got to do is undo this nut here to release the fill valve and we're going to have to undo this nut here to release the flush valve. Obviously, if you're only replacing the fill valve, this is the only one you need to do. So again, just using your spanner and do that anti-clockwise, and that's a really simple job. Just put your hand inside, and there we go. We can just pull that out and around, and you can see you've got your rubber washer there, like I just showed you on the new one, and that sits on the inside to create the seal, and this nut just tightens up underneath. If you just put your hand inside and hold that, you can finish it off. There we go. Now one thing to note is the hole here in your cistern for your flush valve is likely to be one or two sizes, either two inches or two and a quarter inches. Now this is where it's important to know what flush valve you're buying. Now in this example, this flush valve comes with this seal or washer on here, but it actually says if you've got the bigger hole like I have, which is the two and a quarter inch hole, you need to replace it for this rubber washer that also comes in the kit. So just be mindful of that. So I'm just gonna take this off. And then I put this one in its place with this bit protruding down. So I'm just going to fit this loosely and I'm going to leave it loose for now because I want to put the fill valve in as well and just move them around with some fine adjustments before I'm happy they're both in place and then I'll tighten them up. That little rubber cone that sticks down inside, you need to centralise that within the hole and then tighten up the nut. So now we're going to fit the fill valve in exactly the same way. We're going to put the rubber seal over this first because this goes on the inside of the toilet. Just like that and now we'll position that roughly where we want it and poke it through this hole. Obviously when it comes to adjusting these things, just follow the instructions. With this one, you can rotate it in and you can adjust the actual height and the length and it explains in the instructions how to set this up after relative to the overflow on the flush valve. Um, but like I say, these are different for each kind of flush that you buy, so you've really just got to read the instructions on that one. But for now, I'm just going to fit it as it came. You can see what I mean with this corner system. I got very little room, so I need to make sure that when I position all this, that this cable is not going to be in the way of this operating. And when this operates, we need to make sure that this moves up and down freely. Obviously, the only real positions you've got available on this are from about that direction to the same this way. But if I moved it around there, that's going to be hitting into that. And then if I turned this around that way to create more room, the cable then gets in the way. So we're a bit limited, but you've just got to try and work it out so you're happy. Everything's free to move and then we can tighten it all up. And with this, I don't know if you heard then, a little bit of squeaking with the washers tightening up on the inside. 
And that's what I like to do. You don't want to really hammer this tight because you're in danger of breaking the ceramic or breaking the plastic parts. So what you really want to do is do it till it won't go any further and then just sort of nip it up a little bit like that. And same again, just get it till it feels more or less tight and then just try and nip it up so you know that, that seal is squeezed up nicely because we don't want any leaks coming through yet. So if you're enjoying this video so far, then please give it a like. Please subscribe to my channel where you can find more videos on how to fit this vanity unit next to me, how to fit the toilet I'm sat on, how to fit the shower tray with shower tray riser, how to tile the wall and how to tile the floor. So if that sounds interesting, please check it out. So I'm gonna get my cistern coupling washer and put that in the toilet pan. So we just place that by there, like that. And now we're gonna take the cistern and pop it back into place. Pushing it carefully back into the holes like that so your cistern is now resting down on that cistern coupling washer we just put in and also the two threads have gone nicely back through the holes in your toilet pan now the next thing to do is tighten up those wing nuts and that way we can pull the cistern slowly down onto that cistern coupling washer and that will give you a really nice seal so even if you did get a trickle on the inside it will always go down into the pan Just do that up hand tight. So we try to do them up at an even rate, as far as we can go by hand. Making that seal nice and tight. And at the same time, pushing your system back against the wall, making sure that as we secure it, it's all fitting against the wall and down to the pan as it was before we took it apart. So now we have to reconnect the main water feed. Now I'm lucky here because I got the flexible pipe so I'm able to flex that back into position. Now if you've got a rigid copper pipe and you've got no room for manoeuvre, then you need to make sure that when you drop your cistern in place, you drop that thread there from your fill valve into the nut. There we go, so we've got that on, located in, just hang tight and now we'll get the spanner. Now we're going to fill it back up with water by releasing the valve. And you'll notice that the cistern is now filling back up with water and that's considerably quieter than the previous cistern, so that's a good job. There we go, that's stopped, so I'm happy with that, seems to be working. So now the cistern's full with water, we can leave that for a few minutes and check for leaks, but in the meantime, let's fit the push button to the top of the toilet. So let's remove the old button. So with this particular button, I'm going to place that nut over first. Then place the button through the lid of the cistern. Just place that over the top. You want to try and centre this over the hole. And if you do that up roughly, sort of hand tight, so you can just turn it round clockwise like that. I want mine to be central like that. And that has just tightened it up now. So now it's time to connect the flush cable. Now this bit is very simple. Just push that little switch in there. Push it over and click it into place. Now with the lid back on, you should be able to push that button. The flush is now working. And don't forget, while we've been doing that, there has been water in the tank, so now's a good time just to quickly go around with your fingers and feel underneath and check that there's no leaks. So that all seems to be fine. And that is how to fit a dual flush cable valve and a fill valve to a cistern. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, feel free to subscribe and press the bell symbol for regular notifications. And for more of my plumbing videos, you can click on the links in the description section below. So for more DIY, how-to, household tips and product review, please watch my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. I've been Pais around the house. Ta-ta, farewell.